Here's the award-winning director of Children of Heaven, The Color of Paradise, Anne Barron. Films that have touched audiences around the world. He was one of five international directors invited by the Beijing government to create a short documentary introducing the city to the world before the 2008 Summer Olympics. And now, Iranian filmmaker Majid Majidi is causing a stir with this historical epic, Muhammad, the Messenger of God. It's the first film to focus on the early life of the Prophet Muhammad. Filmed both in Iran and South Africa, Majidi's movie was Iran's selection for Best Foreign Language Film at the Academy Awards. TRT World's Stavrula Logothesis sat down with one of Iran's most celebrated filmmakers for a one-on-one. -on -one. Real pleasure to have you here with us. I want to start by asking you, why are films important in society today? Well, thank you very much for the invite. You know, I think cinema plays a key role in all aspects of society today, and it's cinema that opens a wider dialogue with society. What made you want to be a filmmaker? Well, you know, from an early age, I was into the arts and my educational background is in theater. However, I felt cinema is an art with a bigger reach. Many things can be said and conveyed through it, so I focused on that. Now, the next question I want to ask is, you're one of the few um, Iranian filmmakers who decided to stay in Iran and continue to pursue your career. Um, why? My question to you would be, why would I ever have to leave Iran in the first place? That's a fantastic answer and a perfect answer. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm of the firm belief that a filmmaker or an artist belongs to their roots. The product, wherever you are in the world, should be homegrown. Artists and filmmakers belong to one's nation. And I'll use the example of a tree. A tree can only be planted on home soil. If you take that tree and you plant it elsewhere, it won't have the same effect, and that's the same with our cinema. Our identity as artists come from where the work is born. Then we need to take it worldwide from there. Your answers are incredibly poetic. Your stories have always had children in them. And I want to know, what attracts you to telling the stories of children? The world of children and adolescence is a very transparent and I think beautiful world. Children are a bridge and this transparency in children influences the world of adults. When they grow up, they're influenced by the wider world, they lose their innocence, and this is why through children I can convey my message better to the adults and to the wider world and open a dialogue. Which brings me to my next question. Your latest film is about the Prophet Muhammad during his childhood. Why did you choose to do a film about his childhood? You know, I really thought long and hard about how I wanted to portray this film. It's not an easy decision to do when you're focusing on such a high-profile messenger to a faith. It was really difficult for me. It was twofold for me as to why I chose to direct this film. It was one, to show the Western world who the Prophet Muhammad was, what he did, how he led his life. And the other reason was for the Islamic world and the Islamic countries specifically. The challenge within this was to bring unity amongst everyone because obviously there are differences between the Shiites, the Sunnis and the wider divisions within Islam. However, I really wanted to focus on his childhood. That's where the lesser divisions are. So for me, I just wanted to concentrate on his youth and his innocence because it was one of the less complex things to look at. I wanted to portray it in a different light. In your opinion, what is the biggest misconception that we have about Islam. 
Well, in my view, the Western world doesn't know much about Islam at all. Obviously, the people are not to blame. It's the governments and the view that Islamophobia has created amongst us today. And this has caused a misconception of the faith. What people from the West know of Islam is what we've witnessed in recent years. War, bloodshed and terrorism. I mean, this is now what Islam equates to in people's minds. Radicalism and terrorism are the two things that keep repeating itself. The wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the Syrian crisis and Daesh, it's all played a big part in distorting Islam. If we wanted to sum up Islam in a few words, it would be the religion of love, of peace and brotherhood. This is Islam's message. In short, Islam. Which is really the message of all religions, isn't it? You've been uh, quoted in several interviews as saying that you made this film because you wanted to stop Islamophobia. And yet, um, there are still some members of the Muslim community who are criticizing this film. You can see that the challenge is that we are in the world. It's a very strong challenge and a very strong challenge. Well, you know, this is one of the biggest challenges I faced in making the movie, this radical, closed-minded view. It belongs to certain groups who don't really understand. It's been the biggest challenge to overcome because it stopped us being able to introduce our profit in the right way. And, and sadly, before even viewing the film, they've slammed it. Time and time again, in various TV and radio interviews, I've sent a message inviting them to come and view the film together with me. They're not even open to having a discussion with me or even talking about our differences of opinion. How has the West received your film? Well, in regards to that question about the West, the film was screened at the Montreal Film Festival. It's been put forward for many nominations. It's already won many awards. But I really do think that the best way forward to promote this film is to go through Islamic countries. We need to work together to make sure this is done and that hopefully one day my mission is going to be accomplished. So in essence, what you're telling me is you made a film to help stop Islamoph uh, Islamophobia and your, your film is actually um, having to e educate the Muslim world about the, the theme of this film. So how do you feel about that? My reason for producing and directing this film was essentially twofold. One for the unity of the Islamic world and the other for it to be a window for youngsters and adolescents who are now being influenced to join terror groups like Daesh because the real Islam is not like that. The real Islam is peaceful and Islam is so vast you can't really put it in one film. So I wanted to introduce what a beautiful prophet we have. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is someone who can influence those in need. And Islam is such a beautiful religion that for those who do not have a role model and then decide to join religious groups, I wanted to show them that within this religion there can be a role model and that we can unite, whether you're from the East or the West. That just breaks my heart and I feel that. I, I, I think it's very noble what you're doing as an artist because as artists we have a responsibility to the people around us and what we put into the world and I think what you're doing is wonderful work. There's been controversy, uh, as we've been talking about, within the Muslim community about your film and it's been banned in Saudi Arabia and uh, Egypt. Why? Why has it been banned? Can you give me specifics? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. That's very interesting. And this is the question I'd like to ask them. It's the same question I have for those countries. 
and the other countries who ban my film. One of the biggest issues for them is that they took offense with the fact that the silhouette of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was portrayed. There is no reason or rhyme. Where is this written in our religion? Where has this come from? When they realized that actually the silhouette was from behind, they even took offense at that, because they even think that a silhouette should not be shown. But, you know, obviously these two countries have different political views. I'm astonished as to why this film has been banned, and that's the question I'd like to ask them. Well, in all walks of life, we've shown that when people unite, we can show the way, whether it's politics, whether it's the cinema or elsewhere. The question has to be asked to the viewers and to the people who go and watch the film, whether you're a Christian, a Muslim or a Jew, I hope you'll be affected by this film. Time and again throughout the decades, it's been shown that people hold the key and that cinema can be a way for this to happen. So I'm a firm believer that time is the greatest judge of all, and Muhammad, the messenger of God, is a timeless film. I think this film is going to be evergreen because it's made in good faith and under his majestic name. You cannot hide the majesty and beauty of his grace. No fatwa can ever shut this film down. Whether you like it or not, this film will find a way to follow its course, whether now or in 10 years. This film is going to be talked about in the years to come. I'm sure it will. It seems like it's timeless, the topic. Um, how have the Turkish audience audiences uh, received the film? Firstly, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Turkey and the Turkish people. They're warm, they're welcoming, it's received great reviews within Turkish society. And I hope those who haven't watched the film go and watch it, and they won't be influenced by the negative critiques they may hear. They should go and see it and make up their own minds. Turkey is a beautiful country. I'd like to take this opportunity to say that within the next one to two years, I have a few projects and I may be using Turkey as a location. Well, that's exciting. I'm sure we're all looking forward to that. And I want to end on, as an experienced and seasoned filmmaker, what is the one advice you would give to young filmmakers today? You know, my answer would be life experience. It's the biggest thing when it comes to being a filmmaker, a director or a producer. Yes, going and doing an undergraduate or master's degree is all very well, but life experience is what makes you a good filmmaker. It's the one thing that is the essence of a good filmmaker. It's that you study your society. You really live within your society. You go to every nook, every cranny you can in every city, in every area. You study people. You study your society, your culture, because as you may have noticed in all my previous works, in all my films, I've been influenced by my life experiences. They've paved the way for me and also for these films. I can't thank you enough. It has been such a pleasure and an honor to be able to sit down and conduct this interview with you. And I just wish we had more time. I'd like to bring you back and do a whole hour on you as a human being. Um, but this is it for now. I want to thank you very much and wish you a safe journey back home and hope you can come visit us again. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you, your team and the wider TRT network. 
TRT has always been one of the networks that screened my films, that's introduced me to the Turkish community and society. And I hope this relationship continues. Thank you so much. Me too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.